we learn from differences. You know, we don't learn from similarities. So, like, the problem of knowledge is that... We learn from differences, we don't learn from similarities. Yeah. I love that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, the, the difficult thing of figuring out a measure for knowledge is that when we think of measuring things, we tend to think of the way in which we measure things, which is, like, hey, water, you put more water in a cup, well, the cup has more water, you know? Mm. Like, you have something that is long and you make it longer, it becomes longer. So, measures usually tend to be additive. Yeah. Mm. But knowledge is not additive because, let's say, I know a lot about physics and you put me next to another guy that knows about physics. Well, together, like, we don't have, like, that much knowledge diversity, yes. you know? But maybe you put me with someone that knows a lot about like computer science, this knowledge can be complementary and they can get enhanced. And maybe you put me with someone that knows about, I don't know, dance, that I don't know that much. And maybe there's a lot of knowledge, but the knowledge cannot be put to work we, together. We, call, we have a term for this, it's called idea sex. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. it's sexy, but it's true. It's like that, that idea of like kind of putting all these ideas together. This side sees the world one way, you see the idea. And the ideas aren't really working. We need more of that in this country. Yeah, uh, well, and in, the, and the world. And I think yeah. part of what's interesting is, is that what you're doing is you're upending some of the most basic assumptions about economics. Because usually the idea is a country should specialize if it wants to get wealthy and to get rich. And what, when you start to look at knowledge diversity, you start to realize, oh, actually, you need a diverse ecosystem of ideas. And that's really where wealth is generated from. Exactly. And, and the nice thing is also, like, it helps you think about, like, how this works at different scales. So, for instance, as an individual, being a jack of all, all trades is probably kind of like a bad strategy because you're going to be mediocre at all of them. Mm. And there's going to be people that is going to beat you. So you want to specialize a little bit and, and maybe quite a bit. But as a company also, you don't want to be a company that has completely everything. If you think about it, like one of the most paradoxical things I think of the companies of the last 20 years is that Google being so good at search sucks at social and Facebook being so good at social sucks at search and they're like even neighbors and the niches sometimes are very small when you're at that scale. So diversity for economies is very valuable at the more ecosystem level, you know? Silicon Valley has a lot of diversity of knowledge, but each one of the companies within Silicon Valley is much more narrow on their scope, you know? And each of the teams within the company is much more narrow. So when we think about diversity and specialization, the question is, well, at what scale are we looking at?